हेलो वेलकम टू एवरी वन इन दिस वीडियो दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर नाइन ऑन सॉलिड स्टेट फिजिक्स टूडे वन डिस्कस दैट इज मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैटर्स विज वाइस थियोरी ऑफ फेरोमैग्नेटिज्म एंड फेरोमैग्नेटिक डोमेन्स देन डिस्कस बी एच कार एंड हिस्ट्रीज एंड एनर्जी लॉस यू कैन सी दिस इज द सिलेबस ऑफ सिक्स सेमिस्टर कैलकुलेट फिजिक्स ऑन अर्थ क्रिस्टल स्ट्रक्चर एलिमेंटरी लैट इज डायनेमिक्स ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स In the last lecture, we discuss about the dia, para, ferro, ferromagnetic, and classical Langevin's theorem, quantum mechanical treatment. Kore law. Up to that one, we discuss in the last video. Today, we want to discuss this portion that is OS theory and BH curve hysteresis and energy loss. Okay. In the upcoming session, we will be continue this portion also. Right. So, let's start. OS theory of ferromagnetism and ferromagnetic domain. That is, what do you mean ferromagnetism? Actually, uh, when a material, if you uh, suppose suppose this is a material, suppose, sorry, there is a problem in connection. I try to solve this. Okay. I think this can be solved at this moment. There is interlink problem. Okay. Okay, this is the problem. So try to write down here. Okay. So you can see that is uh, if you uh, a material within that material there is a dipole due to motion of electron. So, if these dipoles are permanent uh, dipoles within that, uh, they are aligned such that there is a permanent magnetism within material without external field. This is the ferromagnet material, right? So, there is a spontaneous magnetization within that one. And after a uh, certain temperature, that is called Curie temperature, this magnetism is fall down because this, uh, this thermal energy, they uh, hesitate these uh, dipoles. In various direction, uh, finally uh, got this uh, lost this spontaneous magnetization in this in material above the cool temperature. And chi is large and positive uh, varies with temperature as well as the applied field. Okay. Uh, OS theory takes some assumptions like that. That is the ferromagnetic material contain a number of small region called domains. That is suppose you have a uh, ferromagnetic material within that material there is some domains like that and within that domain there is dipoles aligned that one okay within uh, dipoles the full uh, dipoles are aligned in the same direction this is called domain okay dipoles mean I think you clear up the previous lecture that is the motion of electron in the circular path makes a current and which makes the magnetic field uh, looks like a dipole so these dipoles are aligned in the same direction within the domain and spontaneous magnetization of each domain is due to presence of the exchange field that is B suffix E. This is called exchange field which tends to produce a parallel alignment of the atomic dipoles. So this uh, exchange field that is uh, suppose this is domain uh, and this is another domain this uh, field of this domain uh, wants to align these dipoles along that direction this is called exchange field and this uh, produce one to uh, there is an interaction between the domains and these domains wants to align these dipole along the same direction this is called exchange field and be is assumed to the proportional to the magnetization uh, aim of each domain because this exchange field is depending upon the domain size if the Magnetization, magnetization of this domain is high, then the exchange magnetic field also high. So this V is equal to lambda m, and V is equal to the strong. You can see this is the how much strong that is thousand tesla as compared to the applied field one tesla. When you apply the external field, this is a uh, one tesla, but within that small region, that is the small domain, this um, field strain is very high. You can uh, see this is a thousand times high. Okay. So the effective magnetic field will be the sum of these two fields. Uh, suppose if you consider this domain, there is a, another domain which so corresponds to that portion. 
Now you consider a ferromagnetic solid containing n atom per unit volume and each uh, having a total angular momentum j. Then the magnetization m equal to n g g j mu v v of j that is Brillouin uh, Jones function is like that. You already know in the previous lecture we already discussed this function. So and where x equal to like that. In case of spontaneous magnetization, this uh, external magnetic field zero, you will be obtained this saturation magnetic magnetization. The magnetic moment align themselves parallel to the field and the magnetization m becomes the saturation magnetization m is zero. M is zero in g j mu v and their ratio will be like that. So finally, you will be obtained this expression. Uh, this graphical representation you can see. Uh, after that region, this is the at t equal to Tc. Tc is the critical temperature, right? Uh, the slope is Tc. When t greater than Tc, will be like that. Less than. If it's uh, intersect less than Tc, that means this is you, you you know above t greater than Tc, this is parameter, and below t less than uh, below Tc, that is t less than Tc is the ferromagnetic material is the ferromagnetic material and uh, the intersection of this curve with this p is non spontaneous validation this is okay and the ratio curve will be like that uh, you need to know about this nature of this curve and uh, susceptibility uh, susceptibility change with the temperature uh, like that and 1 by chi changes like that. For T greater than Tc, spontaneous magnetization is 0, BS like paramagnet, and BJX equal to like that. M, N, G, M, V. So just know about this expression. And finally, you obtain this expression. This is the Kuroyo's law, and uh, you know uh, above T greater than Tc, this become. Uh, paramagnetic material okay so we can take this notes uh, and just read it for your exam okay uh, uh, now the domain structure we already discussed in the previous portion uh, that is that these are aligned like that if they are aligned like that this is unmagnetized specimen for that domain structure this is magnetized by domain growth and this is the magnetization by domain rotation History is an energy loss. Uh, suppose you have a magnetic material and if you apply this uh, external magnetic field uh, uh, upon this magnetic field, this is a magnetic material and if you apply, if you apply this uh, external magnetic field on this material, you have, uh, you have a dislike of nature. Suppose, suppose uh, at the applied magnetic field zero to, uh, total, that is the net magnetization that uh, within this material is zero. That is the uh, they align in such a way that that ca cancel each uh, out cancel to each other and makes this uh, become zero. Sh hence, 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 hence. If you apply this magnetic field, then they are aligned. These uh, dipoles are aligned along the external magnetic field. After a certain value of this applied magnetic field, all are aligned in this situation. This is called saturation. This is called saturation. Within material, all dipoles are along along this external magnetic field. This is called saturation. This is called saturation. That is, if you apply, if you increase the uh, external magnetic field, but the induced magnetization does not increase. That is called saturation. After that, if you reverse this field, if you reverse this field, that is, you reduce this field. It does not follow the path which is coming in. It take the different path, and you can see interestingly at h equals to zero here. This is zero at the starting, but at that moment you can see this is h equals to zero. But there is the induction induced magnetic field. That's mean at uh, external field zero, there are some dipoles which are aligned in this direction. Okay. So this is called retentivity. This OMR is known as retentivity. That means they are 
is also h is zero but the dipoles are some aligned in the direction in some direction that is the previous electric field previous magnetic field direction so there is a net dipole along that direction okay so if you wants to reduce this uh, zero if you wants to reduce this zero you apply the reverse voltage uh, reverse magnetic field and a certain value of magnetic field this become this becomes this becomes zero this amount of reverse field uh, need to reduce the magnetization this is known as the coercivity so that is oe is known as coercivity that means this much amount of this field is required to become zero right so if you apply the reverse field and after a certain value this become uh, saturation and this path follow like that so finally you obtain this bh curve and this is bh loop and this uh, actually if you um, sector uh, region this is domain rotation and this is wall displacement yeah, uh, on the value of this median okay when this age is decreased, you can see uh, the it does not follow the initial car. That's why it is called hysteresis. That means its loss is history. It does not follow the previous path. That's why I call this is hysteresis. Now you need to know, need to know about the energy loss this due to this hysteresis. Then you can consider this material contain with this dipole moment mu and the n number of element and if you apply this magnetic field there is a component of this moment linear and uh, that is dipole moment along this field and perpendicular to this field along this field along 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 this field this is mu cos theta uh, perpendicular to this field this is mu sin theta okay uh, 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 this mu sin theta component are cancel out only mu cos theta so angle between this torque applied within this we call to like that so work done is nothing but tau d theta this negative sign indicate this work done against this magnetic field so the summation will be like that and uh, work done mu naught h dm so integrating you will be obtained this expression and finally we just go through this expression you finally obtain this area of the bh loop actually says the work done of this process and this work done per unit volume of this material per cycle equal to that mu naught times the area of mh curve or the area of bh loop so the area of bh loop says the work done of this expression so finally this unit equals to joule per centimeter cube and this energy loss in the form of heat so that's it for today this is all about me this is my contact detail and this is my youtube channel details go to the share you will get different future video some mathematics like this session if you learn something from this session share this video if you learn something from this video subscribe to the channel if you new in this channel and this already subscribe press the bell icon to get notification so take care we'll meet in the next video as soon as possible thank you